Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum ache hey, kaise hey ap. And today we're going to be reacting to Sadhguru's views on Bangladeshi illegal immigrants. And um, we have recently done the CAB bill and it got passed. And um, reading a little bit about this, um, they're saying, you know, some people are for it and some people are against it. And here at the Jan family, we definitely support it because we feel like these are neighboring countries that, and they're minorities from the neighboring countries that need protecting because they're not being treated fairly. And so India is opening their doors to them and letting them get legal so that they have a place to call home because they're being pushed out or raped or killed or converted in the homes that they are coming from. So we definitely support this case, cab bill. Yes. We feel like it is going to help in the long run. It will make them part of the community. It will give them a home and also make them pay taxes and be accountable. Um, so you don't just have people crossing the border for no reason, you know, and like we said in our last video This is not against Muslims those countries that these are coming from these are immigrants But these are Minorities that need extra protection the Muslims in those countries are considered the majority So it is just protecting the minorities um, Just like most countries would do you yeah, need to protect your minorities to make sure they don't get um, you know treated unfairly or poorly by yeah. the majority so this is kind of a way to make them accountable make them pay taxes as well as you know give them a safe place to call home as well so um, we definitely support this we are always for putting your country first putting India first um, you know my husband has always said here if you know the U.S. wanted him to pick up a gun and fight for the U.S. this is his country now he's been here for many years it feeds him and um, and so if they needed him to come he would come and if they kicked him out the only other home he has is India so it's just one of those things like you if if Hindus here get kicked out the only place they can go is India and so this was definitely a way to open the doors um, yeah and so let's watch we love Sudguru he always has such wise knowledge and so let's watch his um, video on on his view trying to project our inefficiency as compassion i don't like that we don't know how to man our borders but we are talking about compassion that's not the truth see when somebody comes to the nation's door because they are violently persecuted somewhere we should treat it differently after all they are human beings for the economic well-being, people are daily poorest borders, people are going across here and there. We need to do something about it. They can make uh, Bangladesh into a union territory and make it a part of this country. Then everybody can go across, like you come from Pondicherry or anywhere else, like that you can go where you want. <laughs> if you talk about inclusiveness, that's a way to include, isn't it? Not slipping into my house from the back door and saying, include me. The, the common discussion which is going on is again about the, the refugees and we being celebrities we get these questions asked and this is the most conflicting uh, question ever because as as a nation any like you know being a part of this country and knowing that so many of us don't even have access to food education electricity absorbing more people into our population clearly isn't a good idea but denying those people is seems even worse so what should be like again where does spirituality comes here like what part does it play and what happens to inclusiveness when such a thing happens you're picking on my yoga definition no <laughs> <laughs> no like I, I clearly know that this is the worst thing to do right now because they are coming in millions and millions and millions where our own are starving so it's like saying that I let my own child die but I save the neighbors one so I mean what sort of if negotiation that, is that? If that was the intent I would bow down to such people 
I will let my own child but I'll save your child, I will bow down to such people if they exist. But that's not the thing. We are trying to project our inefficiency as compassion, I don't like that. We don't know how to man our borders, but we are talking about compassion, that's not the truth. We're just projecting our inefficiency as some kind of a great value. There's no value to that. So, talking about influx of people from outside, see when somebody comes to the nation's door because they are violently persecuted somewhere, we should treat it differently. After all, they are human beings. But for the economic well-being, people are daily porous borders, people are going across here and there, we need to do something about it. If we don't do anything about it, we will be stupid because you cannot run a nation without knowing how many people and who is in this country. We, we cannot run a country like that. Yeah. First of all, we yeah. must understand, I am not for nationhood if you ask me. It would be fantastic if we lo live as one world, but we are nowhere near that possibility, okay? We are nowhere near that possibility. Right now, the best way to address humanity and the largest segment of humanity that you can address right now is a nation. So nationhood is right now very important and a practical solution for humanity as a whole. In the making of a nation, one of the most basic ingredients is the sovereignty or the physical, geographical peace that we call a nation. In this there may be culture, there may be language, there may be religion, there may be everything else, economics, everything is secondary. First and foremost thing is, there is a piece of geography which we call as a nation. Now if you're talking about inclusion, I mean you're right now uh, talking about India, Bangladesh, well you know we became two nations or three nations, <laughs> we became two nations in 1947, we became three nations in uh, uh, 71, so some people think we can make ourselves into another four or five or six. No, I think we must stop this nonsense now because people who are talking this do not know the suffering that happened in 1947-48. There are still… I, I'm sure in this hall there are many people who parents walked across the border and came at one time. What they have gone through, what they have left behind, the sufferings and the pain and the nearly 600,000 uh, people who died and about two to three million people who migrated from this side and that side. In both sides of the border, after seventy years, second generation of people still are not settled. Mm. Many of them are still living like refugees. When this has happened, talking about one more partition is a stupid and the dumbest thing to do. We, sh we should not talk about that. Now about the poorest borders between India and Bangladesh, well, we have largely sealed India and Pakistan, isn't it? Why? Because they're coming across with guns. Mm. Here they're just coming for livelihood. So if they come, we can always… if people come to work, we can give them work permits. They can work here and go back when they want to. As people from Bengal are coming to South India, working for two, three months and going back, Similarly, they can also come and go, you can have some kind of a loose structure. But if you just allow people and give them ration cards and identity cards simply without any accounting, this is going to be a disaster. This will lead to all kinds of problems in future. You cannot run a nation without knowing who is in this country. If somebody wants to come, come into this nation, they must come through the front row, door, they must ask for immigration and come through the front door, we must have a system for that. Exactly. We must have a system for that. How to… how can people knock on the country's door and come inside? Not slip in from wherever they want and be wherever they want, that's not going to work. For nobody it's going to work. We have to take steps on that. It can work for a few politicians. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, nation's interests are being sacrificed for personal ambitions. That is there in this country, what to but do? But it still is everywhere. a very conflicting um, thing because… See, if you want to be really inclusive, we can make the two countries into one <laughs> <laughs> Yes. We can make uh, Bangladesh into a union territory and make it a part of this country, then everybody can go across, like you come from Pondicherry or anywhere else, like that you can go where you want. Are you ready for that? If you're ready for that, I, I think India is ready for that. <laughs>
If you talk about inclusiveness, that's a way to include, isn't it? Not slipping into my house from the back door and saying, include me, right. it's not going to work. I'm here to <laughs>I always like how Sadhguru puts things, mm. you know. Um, but it's true, like, you need to have people accountable. To have a nation, to have a country work well, you can't have people slipping through the cracks, slipping through the back door, and eating your food, and taking these jobs, yeah. and not being accountable, not paying taxes, and yet wanting all the things that everybody else has. So, if you're coming in, you should come legally, and if you need you know, protection, that is why they're doing this, you know, that mm -hmm. is what this cab bill is for, to protect minorities in these other countries, to make sure that if they're being harmed, they have a place to come and be safe, but yeah. also be accountable for, you know, like you said, the door can't always be open, and especially for some neighbors, you can't have that door open at all, you have to make sure you see who comes and goes all the time. Um, you know, this has always been our thing on here is, we, it's not against Muslims. If no. you are a Muslim living in India, love India, this is to protect you, you too, because it's like you want them to be accountable for, you want them to come legally. If they yeah. need a safe home, you need to open your door. And, and if you're worried about the Muslims in those countries who are the majority that are coming over, if they're coming over because they have atrocities too, then they need to have a place to come. But... There are many other Muslim countries that they can go to as well. India yeah. doesn't have to open the door, like Sadhguru said. And she said, like, there are a lot of people that are starving, that need food and education and money. And you can't have your door open all the time, let all the strangers eat and not feed your own babies, right? Yeah. You need to be able to feed your own children first and help others as well. So, and you need to help the ones that need it. The ones that are majority, minorities that need protecting and that need a place to go, these are the people you need to protect. So, um, you know, and places that are worried about it's against this or against that, like open your doors, you know, you feel like this is an atrocity. There are a lot of people coming. India is saying like we are trying to help the people that are having hardship, but we ha our country is also trying to feed our own children. They can't open the doors for hundreds of millions of people. So yeah. if you have something against this bill, against India, open your doors and your pockets and your wallets and feed the other hundreds of thousands of people that are trying to come in illegally. This is not the only country in the world. So yeah. India is trying to do good for the people in their own country as well as help some that are having atrocities in the neighboring countries. And so we support this cab bill and um, love Sadhguru. So yeah, I hope you guys like this. Don't forget to subscribe. And join our wonderful family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.